YouTube, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a sheath, uh, a Kydex knife sheath. So the two knives we're going to take a look at today, this is actually a, a set of knives I made for gentlemen. Uh, kind of matching knives. Uh, this one is designed to be a smaller boot knife, and he is a, a law enforcement officer. So this is going to be the backup to his sidearm. And then he wanted a matching uh, blade, but one he's going to use more for camping. So I made a larger one. Uh, this one's out of 3 16 tool steel quite heavy. For the sake of the video, I'm just going to take you along while we make a sheath for the big one. I will be making both sheaths today, uh, but just it's a lot, it'll be a lot more clear if we're only following one knife sheath being made. To make my sheaths, I do use a Kydex press, and if you click this link up here, I'll take you to a video where I showed you a super simple way that I made my press. And then I usually, uh, I just use a toaster oven. Also, I'll be using a Kydex, uh, an eyelet flaring tool. You can buy them and hammer them in, but I ended up getting this tiny little, I wouldn't call it an arbor press, but it's a little mini press. I got this from um, knifemaker.usa or USA Knife Maker. I'll put a link below where I purchase all my Kydex stuff, the fasteners, everything. So let's get started. So one thing that I do when I'm making a Kydex sheath is I will actually wrap this whole blade with uh, painter's tape. The reason for that is that the retention in a kydex sheath is done with the way that the, the thermoplastic, the kydex, wraps around different features of the handle portion. None of the grip of the knife happens at the blade, so I like to put a layer of, of tape on there, almost like a thin spacer, so that the kydex isn't too tight around the blade itself. Just in case you get little pieces of dirt or something in the sheath, it's going to give it a little bit less uh, chance of it scratching every time you put it in and out, which is the one drawback of a Kydex sheath in my opinion. Um, but this is one of the first things I do. I'll start off with a very precisely uh, cut out uh, piece of masking tape and I'll get that on there. Sometimes I'll do two layers just so that it's a nice... Uh, little spacer so that when the kydex presses it you pull it out of the kydex press and then you can take the tape off and you've got a little bit of clearance in there and i'm actually going to do two layers on this one All right, so now we've got our blade nicely taped up. Go ahead and find our piece of Kydex. And Kydex comes with a shinier side and more of a matte side. I typically like to use the matte side. Um, it's just a personal preference thing though. Use whichever side you prefer. What I do is simply lay out roughly where I want uh, my Kydex to be. Make sure you have plenty of room there. And then, uh, I'll just measure how much on each side I have. So that's roughly, let's say we got about an inch and a half there. That might be too much. Uh, try not to waste Kydex, but at the same time, you don't want to uh, end up with a piece that's unusable. So about an inch and a half on either side. So we'll take this to four and a half inches. And um, we're going to cut this down. So I'll mark out four and a half. Four and a half. And give ourselves a nice line to cut on. We'll cut those two out. For cutting out my Kydex in the flat state, I just use these Fiskars, kind of like shop shears. Uh, you can use tin snips, whatever you really want. This stuff cuts quite easily. And these cuts don't need to be all that straight because uh, these are just going to be large sizes and then after we mold them we will trim them down from here quite significantly so uh, really the only reason to make a nice straight cut is so that your piece of stock that you leave is square for the next time you go to make something. Uh, just as a point of reference this kydex is 66 thou so you can buy all different thicknesses. So 93 thou is a fairly common size. Uh, the 60 thou is fairly common. You can get lots of different sizes and colors. I find this a pretty good general, uh, general size for the sheath. Uh, I'm going to be making a little bracket that I'm going to put my 
belt clip on, and that I will actually use a thicker uh, Kydex, but for this part of it, I use the 66 thou. Again, a lot of it is personal preference. And up here we have our Kydex press. Again, there's that link, I'll also put it in the description, where you can see exactly where, uh, how I built this press. There it is. Uh, some Kydex specific foam, and then some big, thick, sturdy pieces of maple, and a couple of hinges. All this stuff is stuff that I either got for free, or uh, like these hinges I saved off of some stuff that was being thrown in the garbage where I used to work, uh, except for the foam. I have used a, a camp sleeping pad for the foam, and it did work. The one thing with this stuff is that as you uh, press a piece um, with this, it does kind of hold its shape and the foam gets a little bit deformed. But I actually find with this, once you just let it rest for a few days, it pretty much comes right back to a nice flat uh, piece. So you'll probably notice when we're done pressing uh, this sheath, um, there'll be a big divot in it and it'll be kind of look like it's almost destroyed this foam. But I'm actually really quite surprised that after a few days, it will come right back to a relatively nice flat state. And then to heat up the Kydex, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. I just use a toaster oven, uh, set it to 250 degrees, and it'll only take a couple of minutes in there. And usually it's like two to three minutes at 250 degrees. Obviously it depends on the thickness of the Kydex as well as, I don't know, it just depends. Sometimes it's a little different than others, but keep an eye on it. It's not something you want to put it in there, let it warm up, and then go do another task put it in there and just stand in front of it and uh, keep checking on it. Also, you don't want to be reaching in here and grabbing that hot kydex because, well, first of all, it's going to be hard to hold on to. Second of all, you can quite easily burn yourself on those grills, those rails. No need for that. So, some type of a glove. So, really quickly, while the oven is heating up, um, good idea just to kind of set out your sheets, make sure your piece is actually going to fit in your press, uh, make sure you know how you're going to press. So my plan is this, I'll get both of these in the toaster oven. I'm gonna clean these really well before I heat them up because when they're hot, you don't wanna be handling them much. You want them going right into your press. And you wanna make sure you get any little tiny specks of dirt or dust. Um, being in a one room knife shop, sometimes it's hard to contain my messes. So I keep my Kydex wrapped up, but at the same time, I just wanna check for any grindies or chunks of metal. Uh, you'd hate to press that against your blade and go test fit it a few times and put nasty scratches in your blade. So always a good idea. So I'll just make sure it's gonna work here. Uh, kind of do a dry run before you're uh, wasting your cooling time. Uh, make sure you got both sides sorted out. Just let the oven finish warming up and uh, we'll pop it in there and when it comes out, we'll be ready to put this back in. Uh, I usually put it shiny side down because that's the side that will be inside. So if there were ever a chance of getting any marks from like the grill or something, they would be on the bottom there. And that pretty much takes up my whole oven. There's barely enough room for that door to close, but it does close, so we're gonna sit here and wait, and uh, when I come back, I'll show you uh, roughly the, the feeling that you want, the, the texture that you're looking for, and then once that's done, we will put it in the press and clamp our knife. It's only been a minute, 43 seconds. It's already starting to soften up quite a bit, as you can see. Um, a lot of people say they like to leave it till they start to see a curl on its own. And that actually seems to work fairly well. So we're gonna give it maybe another minute or two. But as you can see, this is a very quick process, the heating up of the Kydex. You don't wanna just sit there and come back. Uh, it can get heated up to the point where it, all the texture will just kinda run and get glossy and slimy. Obviously, it'll just start melting and completely liquefy if you leave it in there too long. But um, yeah, that's pretty good and malleable. I'm um, gonna put in there a little bit more. This time I'm not gonna open it up and show you again because it's pretty much ready to go right now. Just wanna make sure it's really nice and, and soft. And but from the time that I grab it out of here and put it into the press, I want that as short of a time as possible. So we are really gonna hustle and book it. So I'm gonna switch strictly to this camera from now on. I think our Kydex is ready. I'm gonna whip it out of the oven. Again, I'm gonna set the glossy side up on this one 
So this uh, the gloss will be into the inside and I'll put the matte side up on the top one. Um, that way we'll have the matte finish on the outside of the sheath. So quickly grab both pieces of Kydex. Slap it there, there, there. Good to go. Clamp. Right, so it's been about 20 minutes. This should be cool now. And there you have it. So you've got a really nice impression there. So we've got the halves of our sheath. We're gonna end up trimming this sheath to about here so that this first finger choil uh, is actually sticking out of the sheath just to aid in removing the knife. But as you can see, that worked quite well. Next step will be to drill our holes, get ready to pop our eyelets, and then trim it up. Also, uh, for this one, I'm gonna make a little standoff that I'm gonna use to put the belt clip on, um, just so that the screws aren't rubbing into the, you know what, I'm gonna show you that right now. So this is a little jig that I made, and this is just a quarter inch aluminum by four inch, and I just cut different sizes. Basically, it's just like a die, a 93 thou kydex, the real heavy stuff. I heat a piece of that up, set it in there, squish it together, and then put this in the bench vise and let it cool. And what that does is it makes a little kydex standoff that allows my screws to go into this without um, having to worry about the screws going through this part. So there's nothing going to be contacting the blade or the handle scratching it up. Um, there's other ways you can do it, but this is just the way that I like to do it, so let's go ahead and we'll cut our piece of thick kydex and get this pressed. Now to hold the uh, sheath onto the belt, I'm actually going to use this tech lock. Um, lots of different options you can use. A lot of the ones I do are these plastic clips, which work great. Uh, there's these metal clips, which I'll be putting onto the boot knife so that this could be uh, tucked into the side of a boot. Um, smaller tech locks and these large ones. I'm sure if the camera will pick this up, but you see there's quite a difference between this thin kydex and this thick, thick stuff. So let's trim a piece of this up. Now we're just gonna cut this one here on the bandsaw. Big old chunk out of here, and stick it like this. Stick this press on there. I'm gonna put it in a vise. Now, as that cools, uh, this little die we made is going to maintain that shape for us. So that will give us our standoff. And there we have our little standoff piece. That will mount right there. So it clears the blade and then we can mount our tech lock onto that. And there'll be room there for the screws um, so that the screws won't be touching the blade at all. I'm thinking something just like that. I think that's gonna be really good. Although this is gonna be a right hand carry so it needs to be like that. So, since we have our rough pattern, or not rough pattern, but pattern scribbled out where we're going to uh, put the eyelets, these are little eyelets we'll be using. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drill these out. And I usually don't use a drill press for this, I prefer using a, a small hand drill. First of all, it's not hard to drill through this material. Uh, one other thing I will note is this a different type of a bit. I don't even know, it's, it's an odd one. This one came with my Kydex kit, so I think they modify these bits to cut through Kydex. It's nice because it's got a very, very sharp tip there, uh, and it punctures a really hard hole, so your bit doesn't wander at all. Regular bits do work as well, but just thought I would point this out.
And while I'm drilling, I'll usually pop in some eyelets just to make sure everything's uh, located correctly. This is my cute little press. A bit of a joke, I understand that, but. All it really is, is there's a, a bottom die. It's kind of uh, got that recess machined in there. And then you put the preformed uh, flange into that die like that. There's also got that same little recess. You can't see it, but it's on the inside of that. So you kind of see it there. And so this will kind of help locate it. Um, this little pin here on this little chingus, it also locates it within the die, so you're not gonna mess up your die. And then as you press it down on this part uh, that does not have the preformed flange, it basically rides up in there and gets flared over. Then we'll take it over the grinder and shape it up. Okay, so got that shaped out. To tell you the truth, I really don't like making sheaths. I only do it because, well, I have to. Now we will go ahead and drill this that we had marked put our clip on and I don't finish polishing everything up until this is all done because as you see I'm gonna have to cut all the material off of this uh, stanchion this little riser that we made but we'll get all that cut off and mount the clip then we can uh, test it on the belt make sure it functions correctly and if it does we'll go ahead and I usually take a buffing a little sandpaper and a buffing wheel to the edges to get them nice and shiny uh, give it more of a factory look um, but all in all, I can clean this up a little more, make it look a little nicer than it does, but it's a very, very functional sheath, so nothing wrong with that. It does its job. It's not a art piece by any stretch. Um, not like the knives. I mean, I like my knives to be really, but I enjoy making knives. I care more about making knives than I do making sheaths. I do these simply as a necessity, but, uh, Pydex sheath making is something that's quite simple to get into and uh, if you're looking for you know people enjoy getting involved with different tactical projects and make different things so Kydex is a great place to start uh, very inexpensive to get into you don't need a lot of fancy tools and uh, the projects will go much quicker than say building an actual knife when you're getting into it so let's go ahead and finish this thing up there we have it it's a fairly uh fairly hefty sheath let's go ahead and see how it fits all right, so I'm calling this one done. One thing I added, I didn't have the camera running, but I added a little finger notch there. I just took my uh, Dremel or my, my Fordham rotary tool and I ground out just a little finger notch there because I didn't want to take this sheath down any further. Uh, this is where all my retention happens right here and here. And I got a nice fit there. I, I massaged it a little bit around this backside with the, uh, just with a heat gun. And uh, with that finger notch removed, I can actually grab the finger troil and it comes out great. And now I'm properly holding the knife as soon as I draw the knife. So that's pretty handy. And 
And there's our tech lock on there. A close up again of that little finger relief. Kind of looks neat too, but highly, highly functional. I think it turned out pretty good. Quite happy with that. And the knife. Yep. It works good as well. Did the same thing on this little knife. I just have to do the clip on this knife yet. But I put that same little uh, relief groove in there. And also, especially this being a boot knife, this being a backup knife to his, uh, to his firearm. Uh, really nice to be able to just have a really nice quick deployment. I haven't taken the tape off this blade yet, but nice lock on there. It's not going to go anywhere and it's out and ready to go. So all in all, I'm quite happy with these blades. I know the gentleman that ordered these is going to be really excited to get them. He's waited a good long while for these, but they're heading out and uh, I'm ready to roll. Just got to put an edge on them. And I think tomorrow I'll be shooting a video. I'd shot one before, but I wasn't happy with it on how to sharpen a knife. Uh, the way that I've sharpened my knives, and it's ridiculous how sharp they get. So, hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please consider subscribing to the channel. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, uh, share it. And uh, also, we have a little contest going on. Once I reach 20,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away a knife. This is the knife. I have it covered in oil right now so that it doesn't rust. In the video, you can check that link up here on how to make this knife with just basic hand tools. And this thing was entirely made by hand. And as part of that and part of this giveaway, when I get 20,000 subscribers on this channel, I am going to give this knife away. And that'll be the first part of the prize. The second part of the prize is going to be a package of steel. So. It's going to include a piece of O1 tool steel, uh, some G10, and some pin material so that you can have materials to build your own knife. And uh, anyways, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers.